Well, somebody that you had your best, your most success with, Skip, says, man, I can't do anything else. Um, like the article I was reading said, Frank Wright stuck his neck out for he Carson did. Wentz. And he did. And then he had to apologize to the owner for yeah. it. Skip, but the thing is, here's the thing. When Carson Wentz is good, he's really, really good. Not great, really good. But when he's bad, he's downright awful. Yep. And I think the thing is, and because if you look at, there's a stretch, Skip, where, I mean, if you look at his total numbers, Skip, they're not bad. 27 touchdowns, seven interceptions. But if you look at, like, the first couple of games and then the, the last two games, all we got to do is win one. Yep. Okay, we lose to the Raiders. Okay, baby, let's go. Jacksonville, we got Jacksonville mm -hmm. lined up. Yep. They done that. They have already fired their coach. They got nothing to really to play for. We have everything to play for. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't get it done. He had a 13 QBR over the final two weeks, which obviously were the worst in the NFL. And in the, that last game at Jacksonville, it was 4.3. Yes. And mm. the article, the Athletic, I think it was the Athletic yes, had an article. Yeah. It told you a lot. And I tried to look the other way, Skip. I had never, ever. You've been around football 40 years. You've been around it longer than I played. Skip, I had never seen someone build a shrine of the backup. They built a shrine of the backup quarterback, which told you everything you needed to know what the locker room thought of him. Nick Foles and Nick Phil. Foles. They did. That t Skip, you know how the locker room is. Yeah. Locker room going to gravitate the true leaders. That's why you got to make sure that everybody's, you know, pulling in the right direction. Because sometimes... You got bad leaders that'll pull the locker room apart. Yep. For them to build a shrine of Nick Foles, who was the backup, yep. tells you a lot. There was, a, there was an article in the Philly paper talking about, you know, he, his, his ways, there's some ways about him that's really not conducive mm -hmm. to being a great leader. He yep. even said, I've got to do a better job. Yep. 50% of his non-screen pass, only, he only completed 50% of the uh, plays that were non-screen. That was 30th in the NFL. Skip, when you got Jonathan Taylor, when you know they got to stack the box, you ain't going to see but single highest coverage. Mm -hmm. They got to stop Jonathan Taylor and do running for 150, 200 yards on a night, on a weekly basis. Yep. And you, Skip, it's, it's man, you, I'm looking at his numbers, 3,500 yards, 27 touchdowns, seven interceptions. I'm like, you go okay. But Skip, the plays, the bonehead play, you're like, Carson, mm. what are you doing? Why would you getting sacked in the end zone, switch hands, and then throw the ball up for grabs? Yep. Why would you just he just wait, rear back and throw the ball like as far as you can, knowing? And, th and that's what it is, Skip. His confidence is gone. They, they, they broke him mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically because he took a lot of punishment. He did. And then the Philly fans started to boo him. They did. And Frank Wright thought he could repair him. Mm -hmm. But sometimes... A broken man is beyond repair. And I think that's what he is as a football player. Now, he might go and... and he, I, Skip, really, honestly, I believe he's better than what they have in, in, in Washington. I'm not sure about that. But Skip, they threw... I think that's a close call Skip, they with threw, your man Taylor Tyler Heineke. But, Skip, they threw seven, 16 touchdowns in 17 games. He, he had 27. So, that, so that, that, that's a touchdown. That's a little over a, a 1.1 touchdown per game. That's not very good. But Skip, I, I don't. How does a guy fall so quick? Skip, if he doesn't tear his knee up, he's gonna be the MVP in 2017. He's about to win the MVP. He was on the cusp. And then he goes from that, from, yep. from a high, all the way down. But Skip, I don't. Yeah, it, it's hard. I mean, when you get, it's it's hard for him to recoup what he lost. I just don't know if mentally, emotionally, and you keep hearing the locker room about leadership and coaching. He doesn't like. Bruh, you got to get coached. I'm not saying they, they got to yell and scream and curse you out in front of the team, but when you're not playing well, the coach has got to call you in there and say, son, what the hell are you doing? Yep. We need you to play better. What you, uh, Bruh, you're not, you're not in North Dakota State. You're not in high school. No. Jobs on the line here, son. And you cost people jobs. It, it's Well, we'll see what he can do. He uh, And uh, uh, Gibson, they can run the – they're running game – he just had the best offensive line in football. He did. <laughs> and one of the best defenses. Yes! And, 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 and the, best, the running best running back. Yes! He has, it, he has solid receivers. Those guys, uh, Pittman Jr. can make plays. Can. They got guys that can make plays. And it, you had two chances to close the playoff deal late in the year. Two win chances. Game, win game, one game, Skip. Yep. One game. Mm -hmm. 
I, I just uh, it, I, I feel bad for Frank Wright. I feel bad for any coach or any somebody that puts their career, puts their neck out there for you, and you chop it off. Mm. Carson Wentz, bro, this is on you. This is all you. Thank you for saying that. As you well know, I never loved Carson Wentz from the start. And I started calling him W-I-N-C-E, <laughs> as in I winced every time he dropped back because I never loved his intangibles. You loved his prototypical ability because he's 6'5", 240, probably. Right. Mm -hmm. He can throw it through a brick wall. Unfortunately, he always tries to throw it through a brick wall, even on five-yard swing <laughs> passes. And his accuracy, because of the power of his arm, it comes and it goes. It yes. comes and it goes. So you start to call him walk, call him walk, walk it to, to him, yes. right? Yes. Walk it to him. Because occasionally when he got in rhythm and he got hot on, on posts and, and deep outs, he could throw rockets. 2017. Yeah. And, and you'd say he is literally walking the ball and placing it in their yes. hands. And, and these are gunshots. Yes. Speaking of him being the hunter that he is, right. th these are rifle shots right. that are hitting people in the hands. But I will remind you, the 2017 Eagles were flat out loaded top to bottom. They, they were good. They were, they were so good that the backup quarterback took over and they were so relieved to be out from under the lack of leadership the diva or what, whatever the, yeah. the arrogance was, the distance in the locker room, they were so relieved to have a good guy at quarterback, they built a shrine to him. And they took off around him, and Nick Foles became the Super Bowl MVP over Tom Brady. Yes. Whew. Yes. And they put up 41 points against Belichick's defense thanks to the MVP Nick Foles. Mm -hmm. Never thought I'd see that happen. But you, you mentioned this excellent piece in The Athletic. And it points out that truth be told, is, is second, third paragraph here, truth be told, some inside the Indy, uh, Indianapolis Colts facility were finished with Carson Wentz in the experiment long before the team's late season collapse. So this wasn't just about the yeah. last two games. So, yeah. Some grew frustrated at what they deemed a lack of leadership, a resistance to hard coaching, and a reckless style of play, as you point out. <laughs> when, when you need, needed him most, yeah. when you needed to trust him most, he, he just got so antsy in the pocket. He looked deer in headlights. He's going to force the action. He's going to force the ball, and he's going to turn it over. And you want to talk about sack fumbles? He became like a slot machine. You just pull down the arm, and the yeah. ball is going to oh, spit he out. He definitely, right? give it, he definitely give it to you. Okay. What was missing, I'm going on with the athletics, some within the organization believe, was the type of direction the Colts got from the quarterback position in recent years, obviously starting with Andrew Luck and then Phillip Rivers and even Jacoby Brissett, who despite struggling late in the 2019 season, remained a deeply respected voice in the locker room. Yeah. Jacoby Brissett, yeah. I'm sure he was. Yeah. High quality, yeah. high caliber, yeah. good football backbone, right. will compete. And yet here came Carson Wentz and... They were done with him, and they realized they couldn't risk trying to hope he'd figure it out next year. And they cut bait with him, even though they had the only coach in the league capable of salvaging the 2017 Carson Wentz. Yes. Right? The yes. only one. And even he had to go to the owner and say, I, I really tried. I'm sorry, but it failed, and we got to cut bait and right. just move on. Right. And remember, the Eagles – Eight, a, a league record $33.8 million dead cap. Hit. Let that, let that sink up a second, Skip. To get rid of it. To get rid of it. <sighs> and Washington just gave up a second round of to take on $28 million. They did. And just to frame this with those last two games, when you needed him most, all you got to do is win one of the two. One. one. One of these games. Yeah. Las Vegas at home. He goes 16 to 27 for 148, a touchdown, no interceptions. 28 QBR, scale 0 to 100, and then the debacle came at Jacksonville because the game was never even close. Right. They fell behind right out of the right. box, and, and it was over early. Well, Jacksonville made a concerted effort to take uh, uh, Jonathan Taylor they away did. and put the ball in his hands. And you saw what happened, Skip, and that's what the teams were, were forcing him to do. They were playing great. 
against Tampa Bay. Skip, that was a, a nationally televised game. Was. We're playing great, and then what happened? Mm -hmm. He started turning it over, it and Tampa Bay, whoop. And that was face. a home game. Yes. Was Indy. He was playing great. Final game at Jacksonville, he throws for 185, one touchdown, one interception, a fumble lost, six sacks, and a QBR of four on a scale of zero to 100. And that's when, once and for all, even the Colts, even Frank Reich said, I, I can't live with this yeah. anymore. So here he comes, and I'll now speak as a lifelong diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. <laughs> I am you not ha threatened. I'm happy. Yeah, you happy? Thank hey, you. He's I think back. everybody's happy that he's, he's back in the NFC East. Everybody's happy. The Giants? <laughs> right. Yeah. Because Dak, and we're going to talk about Amari here in just a minute, right. but when Amari came to Dallas in the right. middle of 2018 when they'd fallen to three and five, remember, the turnaround games came the next week. At, at Philly, mm -hmm. and then a couple of weeks later at home against Philly in overtime, Amari played huge roles in those turnaround mm -hmm. games, but Carson Wentz played huge negative roles right. in allowing Dallas to dig out of the hole they dug for mm -hmm. themselves and win the division in 2018, right. right? You know what, Skip? The thing is, is that we can measure. There are a lot of things. That are, there are a lot of measurables at the quarterback position. Yep. But there's no really quantitative way to measure leadership. Yep. But I don't think people realize how important. I was hearing someone doing a, a, a speak, and they was talking about SEAL Team 6. And they were asking them, they said, you want more talent? You want a guy that's that genius IQ, yep. that's supremely talented, or leadership? What they found out, Skip, the best leadership was more valuable than talent and IQ. Because in what he's finding out, Skip, he's immensely talented. Like you said, he's 6'5", 240 pounds, can throw the ball probably 65 yards. Absolutely. But he's a terrible leader, yep. and no one wants to follow him. Nope. So now what do you have? You got to have those 56, those, those, those 46 other guys willing to go to hell behind this guy. And if he says, let's go back again, there's like, what time tomorrow are we leaving? I agree. And there's like, well, we're going to be like, well, go ahead by yourself. Nobody wants to follow him. Now, he's been two locations. And you can say, well, you know what, Shannon? He was a broken man in Philly. Philly turned on him. They were ready to move on. The fans, okay, fine. Yeah. But he went to Indy, got a fresh start for a coach that believed in him and helped him reach his potential. And that failed. At some point in time, we got to stop looking around because the common denominator in Philly and in Indy was one, Carson Wentz. So now it's on you, bro. It's on it's, it's it's, it's all on you. If it doesn't work now, you're going to be relegated to a backup. And maybe, and Skip, you know what? Maybe at this point, that's what he is. Maybe that's what he is. As a Cowboy fan, I actually fear Taylor Heineke a little more than I do <laughs> even Carson Wentz. Because the one thing about Taylor Heineke, in overall ability, he's got one-tenth the talent of Carson Wentz. Yeah. About one-tenth. Yes. Yeah. But he will compete. He he will he will play make because he'll figure it out on the fly. He'll he'll figure out how to make a play with his legs or maybe with his arm. You I'll I'll take that over Carson Wentz. You remember that game against Tampa? He scored that touchdown mm -hmm. and his D lineman ran onto the field and they pointed to his back, talking about Heineke. Yeah. That's our guy. Yeah. How many times have you ever seen that in two locations? Somebody do that to Carson Wentz? Never. And I don't know why. In interviews, he comes across as a decent guy. But somehow, behind closed doors, they do not like him. The one thing you cannot do in a, in, in a team setting is fool your teammates. Yep. Because you spend too much time with them. They'll figure you out. Because, Skip, if you spend time hiding, as, because it's hard to put on that show, to put on that act every single day, yep. nine, ten hours a day, Six, seven months a year. You know that better than anybody. I do. Because you lived it as a, if not the team leader yes. of two teams. Yes. And you know what happens when the locker room doors are closed yes. and there's no media allowed. Exactly. You get to see inside yes. that player. We see you in the training room. Yeah. We see you in the meeting room. We see you in the cafeteria. We see you in the weight room. We get an opportunity to observe. And you can't fool them. You might fool the media. Now, maybe a lot of the media like, man, Carl's a really great guy. <sighs> And when the, when the players hear that, like, Carson Fuller, you know what? That is correct. <laughs> and I believe that's what they said in well, Philly, guys. and they said it in Indy. Yes.
It'll be interesting to see what Scott Turner, the offensive coordinator for the Commanders, can do with Carson Wentz. Mm. Of course, North Turner's son. He's had a lot Good of luck. success. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.